No, really. I'm actually comparing an Arlie Benton to a Charvel, and I promise it's closer than you think. What's up my dudes, welcome back, Jack here and I promise I've not gone completely wrong. I am going to show you how this Harley Benton Fusion 2 stacks up against my Charvel DK22, which sounds ridiculous as I say it, but I promise you're going to want to hear me out. This is my Harley Benton Fusion 2 roasted SSP, which was a 30th birthday gift from my lovely mum. And this is my Charvel Pro Mod DK22 in Ferrer's Gold, which I bought for myself. <laughs> The Arlie Benton comes in at about £333 right now, which is quite affordable. Bear in mind, mine's the Fusion 2, whereas that price is for the Fusion 3, which is the newer version, but they're still pretty similar. And the Charvel was priced around £900 when I bought it, although I can't seem to find them available anywhere right now. So the Arlie Benton costs just over a third of the price of this guitar, but it really starts to get interesting when you look at the specs, and you'll probably figure out why I'm making this video. Both guitars have an S-type body, 22 frets, Roasted or caramelised maple necks, depending whether you're Gordon Ramsay or not. Lock-in tuners, Graftech nuts, two-point tremolos, and one volume and one tone. Whilst these guitars have the differences, it's kind of undeniable that they're both going for the same type of player. So can you really get an affordable Ali Benton that can hold its own against the legendary Charvel? Yes. Yes, you can. It's clear to see that both guitars look incredible. The silver sparkle finish on the Arlie Benton might not be to everyone's taste, but I love it, dude, and the quality of the paint job's really good. And the Charvel's a stunner too. The flat gold is actually the complete opposite of the Arlie Benton now, come to think about it. It's like Pokemon gold and silver versions for anyone who's over 30 like me. <laughs> and the construction of each guitar is great too. They both feel like really solid, reliable axes. There's nothing flimsy about them. You know how you can just grab a guitar by the neck and feel that it's good well they both have that thing subjective i know i might be talking nonsense but some of you have got to know what i mean although i got unlucky with my Arlie benton at some point in its shipping journey from germany it got smashed about a little bit and took a knock to the headstock it's been a little while since i unboxed this guitar now but i can remember specifically seeing the headstock end of the box being all smashed in and thinking man that's not good but as it turns out, there's just a couple of little pressure cracks in the neck pocket. That's obviously something completely out of Ali Benton's control, and I probably could have sent it back for a replacement, but honestly, with post-Brexit stupidity making it a pain in the ass to send anything anywhere, I just decided on keeping it. The main difference in these two guitars from a construction and quality standpoint is that the Harley Benton is a, like a tiny bit untidy in places. It's really nothing to moan about at all, especially considering the price. But the level of care on the Charvel is just that little bit higher, which you would absolutely expect. Overall, these guitars are much closer in construction and quality than the price difference would lead you to believe. But now things start to get interesting. Let's talk about features because the Harley Benton really shines in that department. And not just because it's sparkly. For a guitar a third of the price of its opponent in this video, it really packs in a massive amount of value. The fact that both guitars have locking tuners, graph tech nuts, roasted maple necks and two point tremolos make these guitars really similar to play and maintain. The tuners on both guitars are really solid and reliable. Graph tech are just the kings anyway so there's no problems there. And the tremolos are quality on both and have no issues returning to pitch or anything like that. The Trem is a Wilkinson on the Arlie Benton, whereas it's a Goto on the Charvel. The Charvel's Tremolo is recessed into the body, whereas the Wilkinson sits slightly proud of the body on the Arlie Benton, meaning you get full range of motion both ways with no problems at all. As you'd expect, with all that, the tuning stability on both guitars is absolutely fantastic. But the frets, dude, the £333 Arlie Benton has stainless steel frets, where the £900 Charvel only has nickel, and there's a definite difference. I much prefer the feel of stainless steel frets over nickel, and there's a reason that it's an high end feature. Honestly, it's a bit of a shame that Charvel's not got them. So the actual fretwork on both guitars is great, but as you'd expect, the Charvel does win out in that department. To be honest, everything about Charvel Nex is just special, and fretwork is one of the main things that you're paying for when you're buying an higher end guitar. There's just more care put into the frets on an higher end guitar than they possibly can with a mass produced affordable guitar, and that's totally understandable. That in mind, Harley Benton made a massive difference using stainless steel frets on this guitar, and the quality of the job is surprisingly good. In terms of electronics, it's not an apples to apples comparison here. The Charvel definitely has better pickups than the Harley Benton, but the Harley Benton has more well rounded options, in my opinion. The Seymour Duncan Hot Rails in the bridge matched with flat strats in the middle and the neck with a five-way selector switch do make this guitar versatile, but only sometimes. I'm not going to say a middle pickup is useless, but it's not for me. If anything, it kind of just gets in the way. 
Then you're left with a classic single coil sound in the neck, which is much lower output when compared to its counterpart in the bridge. It's not a bad selection of pickups at all in any way. It is just an HSS Strat, and I knew for a fact that I was only going to be playing the bridge and the neck pickups. That's just what I'm like. Now the Harley Benton has two unbuckers and a coil split switch for, well, coil splitting. This setup I think covers much more ground than the Charvel does if you're looking for something really versatile. And the Roswell pickups in this thing are actually pretty damn good. I reckon Harley Benton configured this guitar right. If you're not spending a lot on a guitar, I don't think you're looking for something that has a specific purpose most of the time. Whereas if you're spending a little bit more, it's probably because you know exactly what you want. That's how I see these two guitars. With something more affordable like the Harley Benton, you want as much bang for your buck as possible and this has got it. I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for clicking this video. It honestly baffles me that anyone's watching anything that I make and I'm so grateful for every single one of you for watching and engaging with the channel. I love reading all your comments and I reply to every single one. If you are enjoying the video, the best way you can help the channel is by hitting the like button to let YouTube know it's a good one. Also, if you like videos like this and backing tracks, I post new ones every single week so it might be worth subscribing. I'd love to have you around for the next videos. Anyway, back to the good stuff. Now, playability. Surely this should be a no contest, right? This should be the equivalent of like me versus Conor McGregor. Well, not this time. Whereas I'd get left ducked out of this dimension, the Harley Benton stands its ground and comes out swinging. Both guitars are really comfortable to sit with, which is kind of obvious with S-type guitars, admittedly. They both have nice contour cuts, arm calves, upper fret access, but the neck heels are something that we need to talk about. The heel on the Harley Benton is rounded and carved for better upper fret access, which is a really nice feature on a 300 quid guitar, but honestly the Charvel takes it to a new level altogether. Charvel have fully rounded off the heel and taken away a load of material, as well as some out of the cutaways as well. That gives you even more playing room and it's something that they call a scalloped lower back bout. Fancy. I've said this before in another video, but the neck is what makes a guitar in my opinion, and that's the place where these guitars differ the most. We already know that both these necks are roasted, which makes them much higher quality anyway, but in my opinion, no manufacturer makes better necks than Charvel. To Harley Benton's credit, they went a different direction anyway. Harley Benton are using what they call a modern C profile, so it's not a million miles away from a Fender player strat or telly or something like that, but it's actually kind of chunky. There's a lot of material here to grab onto and it does fit the hand really well, whereas Charvel comes at this from a completely different angle and uses their speed neck profile and rounds off the fingerboard edges. The Harley Benton neck is amazing for a guitar in its price range, but if you're asking me, a Charvel's always going to win in a neck off. That's what you're paying for when you buy a Charvel, and it would be silly to expect that same level from a guitar that's a third of the price. <laughs> now, I think it's about time we heard them. For this track, I'm running them both through the exact same amps from Neural DSP into Logic Pro, and then with the exact same processing. I'll switch between the guitars every now and again so you can get a good comparison. Let's go. I don't know about you, but to me the Harley Benton sounds like a quality guitar. There are definite differences for sure, but the Harley Benton does a solid job of keeping up with the competition in the sound department, and really, that's all you can ask for in an affordable guitar. Now let's go to the judges for a final score on how this went down. The judges being me and you in this case. For me, I think the Harley Benton has shown that an affordable axe like this can really punch above its weight. It can definitely produce a sound and playing experience that can angle guitars that are much more expensive than it is. It matches the Charvel in terms of features, comfort and sound 
sound, but the real places where the Charvel wins out is the quality of the construction, higher end parts, and the amazing neck. All these things are where your money goes when you're spending a bit more on a guitar. For 333 quid though, I'm not even really sure there are other guitars on the market that can compete with the value that you get from an Arlie Benton Fusion. I really like this guitar a lot, and I'm keen to get my hands on some of the newer stuff they've made to see how much better they've gotten. But now I really want to ask your opinion. What do you think of the Fusion and just Arlie Bentons in general? Do you own one or have played one and either agree or disagree with my thoughts on it? Drop me a comment so I know what you think. Maybe you just think I'm done for making this video. That's cool too. Comment that. <laughs> either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts, so drop them below. And thank you again for taking the time out of your day to listen to me talk about guitars. It really means the world to me, and I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and help spread this video to other awesome people like yourself. And why not consider subscribing? You got this far. I post new backing tracks and videos every single week, and I would love for you to be a part of the channel. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm going to go and play these guitars some more. Until next time, take care, mate. Stay safe. I'll see you later. When I got the guitar out, there's a couple of little pressure pa it's a little while oh my god uh. but when i got the guitar out there's only a couple of little pressure cracks P pressure cracks why can't i fucking talk dude it's been a little while since i unboxed this guitar there's just a couple of little cracks in the fucking neck pocket i'm sure you've all come across these neck <laughs> 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 The Seymour is <laughs> alive. I'm not going to say that the middle pick is <laughs> words that sound good coming out of mouth. Mouth words do not sound good. <laughs> takes the feel of the feel. We already know that both these wrecks are no wrecks are nursed. <laughs> idiot. It's the feel of the. Both these necks are roasted, which takes the feel of the feel of the neck up. We already know that both these necks are roasted, which makes a much higher quality anyway. But in my opinion, no manufacturer makes better necks than Charvel. And to Arlie Benton's credit, they went a completely direct. To Arlie Benton's credit, they went a completely direct front direction. To Arlie Benton's credit, they. <laughs> to Arlie Benton's credit, they went a direct. To Arlie Benton's credit, they went a different direct. Hmm. But the Arlie Benton to me really, 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 really. I don't know about you, but to me, the Arlie Benton really stands up as a sa sound, sa sound salad. What am I talking about? What do you think of Arlie Benton and the fusions? Arlie Benton and the fusions, like in Bob Marley and the Whalers. If you did, be sure to hit the like button to hell. <laughs>